Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with yet again another special guest. And this one is special today on the Gratitude Podcast interview regarding the pandemic. This is uh, none other than Michael Anderson, the general manager of the Columbia Tower Club, a place that I've gotten to call home and have made it uh, really kind of my second place to be. And he does an incredible job as our GM. Mr. Michael Anderson, welcome to the podcast. Well, David, it's good to be with you, and thank you for that introduction. Uh, I, I wish we were together in person, but this is, is this is just about as good. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's getting to be kind of a close second, and suppose between Zoom and FaceTime and that type of thing, it's been fun, and so forth. So, as you may or may not know, the reason I'm doing this is to get really different people's perspective on what we're going through. And I know you very well, and somebody who juggles a lot of balls as you do, and takes on a lot of responsibilities. A good person to ask some of these questions. So, I've got four or five questions for you, just around kind of what we're going through. So, number one, first question is. What is your best coping mechanism in dealing with something like this coronavirus pandemic? You know, I think for me, uh, I've, been, I've been paying attention to how I feel. Mm. And, uh, you know, any, any, and acknowledging, you know, if I have got any anxiety or worry or what have you, um, recognizing it. But then what's helping me is I kind of separate it from it, give it a little bit of distance and make sure that those feelings aren't necessarily who I am mm -hmm. and that, you know, I remind myself uh, that I'm not those feelings. Uh, it's natural to, to worry a little bit because we don't know how long this is going to be and, and there's that unknown. But um, it's okay to have those feelings. It's not good, I think, to have them, to dwell on them. And uh, uh, frankly, what's helped me the most is just to get engaged and, you know, show up and, and do things that I can do right now that matter and that are under my control. Right. And that's really how I've, I've you know, been feeling. The days I do that well, I feel pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and it definitely, like anything, it goes where there's the, the good days, the bad days, the going half mad days, as Jimmy Buffett once said. But in fact, speaking of how it changes a little bit, do you notice, um, has your uh, ability to focus on what you're really grateful for, has it changed what you're most grateful for before versus now? Did you notice it's different in the things that you're really focusing on that you're thankful for? I, I, I definitely... I think one, because I miss, um, you know, contact with people. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I right now live alone. And, and so when I'm, I'm here at the club, you know, we are trying to social distance and be careful and so forth. But it helps that, you know, I interact with, with several of, of, you know, my teammates as we're trying to do things. Um, but what, I definitely, I, I, every day I'm trying to think in terms of, you know, look at this beautiful sunshine today, the weather we've got, um, uh, you know, my children and I uh, had, a, you know, my daughter had a birthday and we did a virtual birthday party. Oh, nice. um, so it's, it's a matter of those types of things. Um, I, I'm making sure I've got a good book and uh, and and so thankful for that, um, and and the fact that you know I'm healthy, uh, I haven't had any symptoms, uh, I've been careful. Um, I guess I'm not so worried about that. Uh, I just hope you know that we you know get to the other end of this and can start you know continuing to build our future. Yeah, exactly. And as you and I have had uh, many conversations regarding the type of job that you have and what it requires, and you have to be so good at so many different things and accounting mind and the marketing mind and the personnel mind and all these different pieces of that job. I liken it a lot of times, I'm sure I've said to you before, of being a pilot because I've been a pilot for a number of years. You've got to be able to do a ton of things at the same time. But with that in mind, what tips or maybe thoughts or uh, ideas might you have for the person that doesn't quite 
get as busy and now that they're homebound that they might be able to be doing while they're kind of stuck back at the old home or condo? Well, I, I'm sure everyone has a list of, of things they wish they had time to do. Mm -hmm. And boy, this would be a great time to click off a few of those things. Absolutely. Um, and I've, I've talked to friends, um, you know, it's, it's, if, if you're handy, maybe doing something like that, but you know, I'm not necessarily that handy uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. So my list is more, I'm always, I've got a list of the people I haven't talked to for a while oh, that's and good. I want to catch up and say hello and how are they? Um, I, you know, I've busied myself with kind of some strategic thinking. I think that as we come back through this, um, work-wise, the club is going to probably open back up in stages. Mm. And so what does that look like? Uh, right. how can we plan for that? How can we make this time period, uh, productive? So that when we come out of this, I mean, some of the interesting thing, you know, gratitude towards our, our trying to do all of the social media and virtually learning with these tools and so forth. Uh, you know, Brittany and others, uh, Rachel, uh, we've gotten better at it because we had to and we've had time to get better at it. Um, I think the food kits and food to go and Ricardo and I, for example, were talking today uh, about what if we were to start making homemade pasta, mm -hmm. homemade sauces, mm -hmm. label it, have the Caesar salad kit and so forth. So that there's some, those some nights our members, you know, in the future, maybe, Hey, I don't want to cook, but, that's a fantastic meal and I can take it home with me. I mean, you'd be a perfect example. You, you know, leave four or five o'clock and yep. take a bag with you and you've got, you know, homemade, you know, rigatoni and, a, a, you know, Bordelais sauce that Ricardo made, you know, so, so I think if all of us think in terms of, Hey, this is a great time to be creative and think outside. No, that's kind of trite. Think outside the box. Right. Um, you know, that's what I recommend to others, you know, just, yeah. just be, be thinking about, okay, what can, what good can come from all this? Yeah. And I think I've been using this term a lot lately about uh, making lemonade out of lemons and so forth and, and taking and seeing the silver lining through all this uh, pandemic and so forth. And, but it kind of leads into my next question. You kind of already answered it too, but I think, again, somebody who juggles as many balls as you do and has as much responsibility all rolled into one job in addition to your personal life and whatever, is this concept of when this is over and we know it's going to end, we don't know when, but we do know it will end and there will be a vaccine or there will be different uh, times where they've flattened the curve and gone on the downside and so forth. But any other thoughts for people, what they can be doing now, why they have the time to kind of hit the ground running when this is done? It's this, this, this condition we're in and where we're going, um, there's going to be some key learnings that come from all this. Absolutely. And I think just like, I don't know about you, but I didn't use Zoom, I think probably once in two years. Mm. And now I'm using it all the time. Um, I laugh. The birthday party for my daughter we talked about, I, my 91-year-old father-in-law was on Zoom. Oh, wow. Um, cool. And, uh, you know, he did quite well. He held, you know, he, he had a he needed a few questions. He probably did better than me. Um, and, and I think there's so much, you know, like Rogers, you know, has the series coming up about marketing and, and, right. and so forth, using social media this way and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are things that I would suggest. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, there's there's going to be some good to come from this um definitely um and you know i don't know if we'll be shaking elbows for the rest of our lives um but uh it's it's it truly you know just it, it, also the planning um of, of now that this has happened i think there's going to be a window of months where 
you know, we've got to decide, I guess, how ready do we want to be for something like this again? Right. And, and have those key learnings too and so forth. But business wise, um, I just, you know, I hear things about restaurants uh, that 50% of them may not come back from this and so forth. Um, right. You know, what, what is that going to do to our hospitality industry and the, the neighborhood and so forth? It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I think we just all have to, you know, I would recommend we're all more kind um, point. and think in terms of win-win instead of win-lose right now, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because that's going to help all of us. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, trying to be good citizens, yeah. and, uh, both in the business community, but elsewhere. It's a good point. And I think that we know that uh, this country of ours went through 9-11 and the recession in 2008 and, and different things there. But this has been the first thing I think it's, it, I can recall that's ever affected the entire world. So we are kind of in this together. And so to be kind to other people is, uh, is such a great point as well as the other things you mentioned. And, which leads me kind of to my last question for Michael Anderson is, do you have sort of like a quote or a philosophy or a mantra or something that kind of describes your approach to life and how, you know, you and I are in the same generation. We've been through a lot and a lot of jobs and big responsibilities and managing people and so forth. Has there ever been something that you kind of think, God, that kind of describes how I approach my, my approach, if you will, to life and people and so forth? Yeah, you know, um, I, I over, the, over the years have used um, a lot of different rituals and things to, to help, my, help me, uh, you know. But I think the one thing that comes to mind is I get to pick my own attitude. Ooh. And, you know, that, that no matter what happens, no matter who else is trying to influence me, um, that I need, I get to pick my own attitude and, and that when I'm good at that, uh, the outcomes are always far better. Um, and, uh, it enables me not to get defensive, to listen better. Um, and it really ties it all together for me. Um, I think another is not to be so hard, you know, on yourself, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, that, that sometimes speed of delivery and getting something started is far more important and taking those first steps than getting locked into trying to have it be perfect right from the get-go. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that, you know, so, so yes, uh, pick your own attitude. I like that. I like that. I get to pick my own attitude and all speaks about how we, uh, the approach we have every day it can be plus minus can be left right up down positive negative whatever and it is a choice and that's a word I use a lot too is it is a choice but I also like the part about uh, being kind to yourself and I've said many many times uh, we say things to ourselves we never say to a friend and I, I just don't understand why we're so hard on ourselves and the only explanation I have is that maybe it just pushes ourselves harder and I'd rather we're hard on ourselves and way too easy. Like, well, that's close enough, you know? And it's like, when you talk about the metrics at uh, CTC, always pushing to be better, whether it's the guest experience or whatever it might be, it's, it's always good to be pushing hard. So, but, but I like that. I really, really like that. I, I pick my own attitude and you may see that in the upcoming Monday morning minute. So just uh, be watching out for that. Cause I like that one. I may have to steal that one from you. So well, I've stole one trick from you. Um, I still have an old, I'm looking at it right over here, an old Franklin planner. Oh, yeah. I do update it every year with the pages, but, right, right. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, it has the very first task every day is attitude. And mm -hmm. I write that every day. Excellent. And, um, and then towards the bottom, I write the word gratitude. Oh, excellent. And I always write down and this is, I started doing after you and I were talking and I just, I write down things every day, a few things in the morning that I have gratitude for oh, and it kind of kicks the day off the right way. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. Because I heard somebody once say, gratitude turns what you have into enough. 
So it's a, uh, it's a good way to go. So, well, thank you, sir. I so appreciate those are great uh, tips and ideas and uh, I get to pick my own attitude. I love that. You're just so reinforcing the idea that it's a choice we all get to make every single day, left side of the bed or the right side of the bed. So thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the Gratitude Podcast. Well, David, thank you for including me. You bet. Take care.